So let, so let me just start, start this, this slide. slide. Right. right. Um, um, last year, year at LWCon uh, uh, in Beida, uh, the Netherlands, we launched uh, OpenCHP. Um, um, most of you were there, and my colleague Rob did a fantastic job on showing you how to install it, and, and, uh, <coughs> and we did some other things. things. Um, we, made we made it a kind of an event. Unfortunately, it wasn't recorded. Um, um, but, but I'm going to, to talk to you, to you um, a, little a little bit about because, um, like, like over, over the last past, past year, year um, um, I've, I've, I've talked to people and, and we talked, talked about, about, about a lot of OPTs, and there was still a lot of people that actually didn't really know, know what it was and what it could do. do. So. so I'll do, I'll do a quick recap. recap. So, so OpenCSP open stands, stands for the Content, content Services platform. platform. Um, and, and basically, basically when, you when you install OpenCSP, which, which is just, just a couple of, couple of extensions, some, some templates, um, and, some and some layout tools, tools uh, but nothing, but nothing like, like a complete framework, framework that only will work on its own. It's, 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 it's all media media extensions that will work, uh, and, you and you can expand them with other extensions if you like. Um, but, but you get complete out of the, out of the box knowledge base. You get all, you get all the, tools the tools to create well, well a, a perfect, perfect knowledge base. And I'm going to show you that as well in the demo. Um, um, and so, and so it's, 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 it's completely open source, source and, and it's, it's the, the base for building, building well, basically anything. anything. So, if so if you want, want user, user input through forms, forms so, so making sure, sure that the metadata that you're creating is, is, is valid, valid and, and uh, um, it's, it's all, all uh, uh, how you say, say that, that, it's all done, done by specific so that you will never have, have data, data that, that you don't, you don't want, want to have, like edit source, source code, code where you can just play your around. around. So basically, basically that, is that is the idea. idea. Um, um, and, and you can see more about um, about, about what it can do and what the use case, case can be, because um, um, it's, 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 it's big. It's seriously, seriously the, 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 the base, base for OpenCHP is pretty amazing. amazing. And, not and not because we build it, it but we've been, been using it for like a year, year, year and, and we've seen so many, so many uh, things, things created with OpenCHP that it's, 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 um, it's pretty, pretty amazing. amazing. Um, um, so let's go back here. Can I go full screen here? No, apparently not. So, well, what makes, makes OpenCSP uh, 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 is, uh, <coughs> it is, is we, we separate content, content um, from, from metadata, and we, and we use the uh, uh, slots, slots to do that, um, um, making, making it for a user that's, that's actually uh, adding, adding content really easy, because, because the, user the user only needs to focus on the content he's creating, creating and doesn't have to bother with like, like in the source code looking like templates or anything else, just, just works on the, source, on on the content. Um, um, and we use, and we use a clever, uh, uh, we, we, we uh, have a clever use of templates, templates in combination with Lua, and you saw that yesterday uh, with Magain and his Lord, where, where, we, um, uh, where, we, where we use the uh, uh, array, array functions together with Lua to also be password compatible, and that's also what we've done with ProCCP 2.0. Um, I'll show you that in the next slide. Um, um, and because you can, you can create certain page types, types um, um, depending, depending on the metadata, the metadata you need for that page type, as, as soon as you actually created that, and something wants to create a new, a new content page using, using that specific page type, um, 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 it's, it's all built using dynamic, dynamic forms. Um, um, so, so everything, people don't, people don't have to build forms, it will be done, done for you, and, and, and I'll, show I'll show you that in a second as well. And then, and then obviously you've got Wikisearch, Wikisearch. Um, and, and that's, that's pretty, pretty comprehensive because, because it, Wikisearch, Wikisearch can actually search, search inside, inside content, but, but also use semantic uh, properties to search there or have facets, facets on semantic, semantic uh, properties, making, making all, the all the content you're creating um, um, really, really easy to find, find again. Um, um, and, it, and of course it's just pure media wiki and utilize semantic media wiki but, but it could be any, any semantic, semantic uh, tool, tool that, you, that have. you have, but you can currently we have semantic media wiki because it works like a charm. Um, um, and, and very clever set of extensions. So that's, so that's a recap, right? We've already talked about this basically last year. 
So what, so what have we done for OpenSea C speed, C -speed, C -speed, C -speed two zero? zero? Well, first of all, it's one thirty nine compatible, and and uh, uh, eight. eight. Um, um, making sure, sure that all these things work, work and, and updating them. Uh, and, and as we, as we had that talk yesterday with my my and his lord, so we now use the array functions with new ones that are variables and the as arrays. Um, another, another thing that we've done, done if we create a certain page type and somebody wants to um, create, create a new page for that, that there will be an automatic filter type for so you don't have to create your sidebar manually anymore. There's a new install script. Basically, script. basically um, um, it does, it does the same, same as the last time, but we split, split it completely up. up. So, so you can, you can run the install script and say, okay, um, um, just, <coughs> just install the settings, or just install the pages, pages, which basically are the templates that make everything work. Um, um, and there are very many, many, many other general improvements, and Ms. Walt will talk about that also after my talk. So, so the, principles the principles of a knowledge base, basically, basically a knowledge, knowledge base, base by default is you define, define uh, what, kind what kind of pages, pages that you want to create. So, so let's, let's say you want, want to create a person's page because you, you need to add, add to your wiki a lot of persons. Um, um, that, means that means that you, you define, define what, do what do we, what, what does, does that, that page always have to have that for metadata, like by the first name, the last name, the date of birth, those kind of things. things. Um, um, and then, and then it's, it's important that we start creating pages that, that, that the metadata will always be filled, right? right? And it needs, needs to be done through forms, so, so, so you can, can actually also control, control the input. Because if it's the date of birth, you, birth, you can have the date picker making sure, sure that nothing, nothing weird, weird is, is entered. Um, um, so, so we're, we're keeping, keeping that in mind. Um, I'm just, just going to show, show you a, an installment for OpenCSP. First, I'll just have a look. We went, we went here to, to uh, about OpenCSP, um, um, and, and on the right, so this is the OpenCSP.org website. This is just this one. I'm just, I'm just showing, showing you this because here, here you can find the uh, documentation of how to install and how, how certain sort of things work. So if you, so if you go here to documentation of OpenCSP, um, um, you got the, you got the requirements, the installation, um, how to get, how to get to additional content. content. Uh, uh, what extensions do we use about the type of step phases, and then some, some more, more about class definitions. And class, and class definitions is, is what we use, uh, and, and you can also call it class types. Right. right. So, so are we going okay, to have this one? Here we are. Here we are. So this, so this is, is a, a clean, clean install of OpenCSP, which is added a menu item here. here. Um, 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 and and we'll look at that for her demo later on. So basically, so basically, this is, this is Bootstrap. This is, this is when you install OpenCSP, your clean or work for the video can install and will look like this. Um, so, so on top, you've got your admin links because that's one of the extensions that come with uh, OpenCSP. So, so only uh, admins will see that actually. It's the same, same with some of, some of these menu items. You got these, these, these are hidden from normal, normal, normal users. users. The normal users would, would have home page to search, but because of admin, I see all these extra menus, menus now as well. Um, um, so this, so is, this a is a default, default installment, uh, uh, just, just like, like normal, normal media wiki. And, and now, now we want to create, create we, want we want to start, to start um, uh, adding, adding content. content. Um, so, so what, what, what I can do here, here is I go to my class definitions, um, um, and, that's and that's basically the page types. types. And that will, and that will give me an overview of the current class definitions that have been, been made. Now by default, default is class definition and page, and it's all created in person. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to create a new one. Um, um, and, all and all the other tools that you see here, here I'm going to explain, explain them uh, a little bit later on. Above, you know, you know, tools, nav, nav menu that will allow you to actually edit, edit the menu you see on the top. Um, um, and same, same with the header. You can, you can actually change the header. header. So, so there's, there's a lot of things you can do just, just from as an as admin, just right in uh, out of the box. Um, um, if you, if you before, before I go, go to the uh, uh, class definitions, if, if I go to the documentation, you can install, install additional content, content that might help uh, uh, if you, you haven't uh, used OpenCSP before. Um, Gesundheit. Um, um, where's, where's my page? Right, right. okay. One of the, One of the other extensions that, that comes with OpenCSP is PageSync, and, and I can go there to 
it's stored, it's stored shared shared file. It's all in the, I, I, I would go through this quickly, but it's all, it's all in the manual. manual. Um, um, and then you, and then you can install, install some additional content. And um, basically, it's just, just install, install some, uh, some, pages some pages that give that you links to um, information, information about OpenCSP and how to use it. Um, and once you, you do that, that you get, get an extra help item, item in the menu where you can just, just um, where, where, where everything is explained. And if you want, you want to little, know a little bit more about the research, you go to the research page, you know about page change, like from, et cetera, et cetera. So that is all like, like, like kind of, kind of index, index page for OpenCSP that you can uh, additionally install and it just creates an OpenCSP page in your wiki. Okay. Okay. So, now so now back to knowledge, knowledge bases and creating and adding content to the to your, to your wiki. So I go so to, I go to class definitions. definitions. Now there's, now there's a lot of information you see there, but that's, that's has, has to do with the fact that you can customize anything, anything and everything. Um, um, so, the so the layout of the page, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. But I'm just I'm just, I'm just uh, a simple, simple user, user and I want to also create like I want to add persons to 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 my wiki. So, so I'm going to create a new class definition. So what I'm going to, I'm going to, how to what, do what do I call this? Well, we, well, we already have a person class, so, 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 so let's call this person, uh, my, my person, actually. I see that there it might be a good one. All the, All the other things, things, I just leave for what, for what it is. It is. I, out of, out of the box, box, it just works fine. So, so I go here, here, I say submit, and, then, and, you, and see you see how quick it is, right? So now it's created a kind of a page type that users can um, um, use to enter data. data. Um, um, but, but we want, we want to have some, what we, what we call defined parameters, basically the metadata. So, so, so okay, what metadata does, does this page need to have? So let's, so let's edit that. that. It has some information, information here, and the documentation explains that a lot well, as well. But it's, but it's actually pretty simple. So, so I'm, I'm, I, want I want to have metadata, so, so let's say uh, first, first name. name. Um, I leave all the other things, I, there's, there's a lot of things you can do, but the only thing I want to say is it's required and I want to show, show it or create it. I'll do the same with uh, last name. Required, required, show and create, true. true. And, and then, then finally let's do um, date, birth, birth um, um, required, required, required. Show and create two. two. Actually, Actually what, what I could do here, here is just make to make the logical, logical view and see how, see how that works. I'm going to say, say this is a text field, and I'm, and I'm going to do the same here. here. It's a text field, and, and for the date of birth, birth, I'm going to say, say that's a date, date field. Um, um, and I'm going to save that. So now, so now here, here you can, you can see um, the metadata that we find. So, so Basically, in what, what two minutes, minutes I've created, I've created a new page type, type and, now and now I can ask a colleague or I myself, myself to actually, to actually add, add all the persons to the wiki. The wiki. Um, um, and why, why would I add persons to the wiki? Well, for instance, for instance you also want to um, um, keep, track keep track of all the meetings you have, and then, and then you create, create a, like, a, a meeting type page. page. And, then you, and then, then you can actually choose one of the Instead, Instead of, of typing who has, who has been in the meeting, you can just use a select box or a token, or a token field to, to um, um, filter, filter all those use persons, persons that you have in your wiki. So there's, so there's a lot of, you know, you know a lot of, a lot of um, uh, uh, possibilities there. there. So, so I go to my, my pages, and as you, and as you can see, um, um, we've already created something, something here for a person, and but here's my person, my person and there's no pages yet. yet. So, so I'm, I'm a normal user, I want to create a new page, and you can actually Put this, put this button wherever you want it to, 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 to be, but now, but now it's on the page. Just page. So I'm going to say I'm going to create a new page. What's, What's the, name? the name? Well, the page is going to be uh, my name. My name. Let's, let's do what we usually no, know by. Uh, Charlie, um, um, select, select page type. type. Well, well, that's the my person thing. Now, the good now, the thing, thing is, when I, when I said show and create, and required is required, I cannot create a new my person page. Um, um, without, without actually, actually needing, needing to fill this in. So, so making, making sure, sure that the metadata is always, always available, available, otherwise, otherwise I can't even create that page. Um, so I'm, so I'm going to say submit, so, so I'm now creating, creating a new page. And there it and is, there is. So, so this is a my, my person type, type page. page. Um, um, and, then and then for a user, this is really, really easy, easy because um, you, can you can actually uh, uh, Make sure, make sure that, that they can either, either edit, edit this or, or can't edit it, so that's that only like certain persons can edit this. 
But the, but the, 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 the fun thing is, they can now just click on edit, they get a visual editor, editor and, and whatever, whatever they're typing here, here they, just they just need to be concentrating on content and not, and not metadata or templates or whatever, um, um, making, making it really easy to add, to add content to your, um, to your, to your, to your website. Let's, so let's say this. this. Now, now, so how so does, how does that work? If I, if I go to the source, source you, notice you notice that you see, you see only what I just, what I just typed, nothing, nothing else, else, all the metadata is somewhere, somewhere else. else. Now, as, now, as an admin, you can actually, actually it's one, one of the uh, tools, tools that we have here, we can actually, actually look, look at all the spots that Swimming Page has. has. So, so, and here you can see how we built this, right? So, um, the base, the base properties for this page, which is just a template that set, uh, which, which also sets the uh, semantic properties. Um, um, the title, the title um, and the class, class my first. And then, and then here you've got the class, class properties, which is basically the metadata that we created for this, for this page. Um, um, so, so it's also in a different slot. We even, we even have a slot here that's not used in data. data. You can change JSON or whatever in yeah. there, whatever, whatever you need. Um, um, so that's, so that's how. That's how, that's how we build that, that up and, and, and actually, actually um, um, uh, keeping the content, content away, away from the metadata, making, making it for users really, really easy um, to, start to start working and, and filling up the week. The week. <coughs> so you have, a, you have a knowledge base out of the box with a lot of tools um, that you can use. So that's, so that's the, the really, really basic, basic I wanted, I wanted to, show to show you um, about, about OpenCSP. It's, it's really, really easy to create um, class, class definitions or page types, types um, um, making, making sure, sure that all your data will be correct, correct when it's entered, right? right? Um, um, then, then one thing, one thing I can show, show you here is, is search. search. Um, um, as you can, as you can see, see, we already uh, have like facets here, um, uh, including, including my, my person, person class. So if I click on my person, it will, it will only show, show the results for, for pages, pages with the page type of my person. Um, um, so that's, so that's actually, actually pretty, pretty neat. neat. Um, um, and, you and you can do a lot of things with the search. search. Uh, uh, you, you can, can actually have the, uh, the outcome run through templates so that you can make it look different. Um, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. And you, it can actually search inside the content of a page as well. Um, so that's about Wikisearch. Um, and there's way much more uh, to Wikisearch than this. What else did I wanted to show you quickly? Spaces. So, by default, OpenCSP comes with uh, with a W Spaces. Is it W Spaces? I think so. Yeah, uh, extension. Um, you don't. It doesn't have to. But basically, what this does, it allows you to create namespaces for MediaWiki real time. So, if I would go to manage active namespaces, there's none. But I could quickly add a new namespace. And as soon as I say save, so in my case, we had the my person. So I could have put the my person uh, pages into a namespace person, for instance. Um, so you can create namespaces real time and, and manage them as well, which is pretty neat, especially if you have larger wikis. Um, with all the tools that you get, uh, and again, have a look at the, um, at the help here and the, the there's question and answers, general documentation. There's a lot of things that you uh, you can find here. Um, also, where you can get some help, matrix chat, chat room. I think there's also a Discord. Um, so if anybody needs uh, help or wants to, you know, chat about OpenCSP, that's just fine. Um, we're available. And OpenCSP, by the way, if I go back to the um, homepage, um, it's open source. It's, um, let me have a look, there's a steering committee there as well, um, where we have some meetings. Uh, we try to have meetings every two weeks. Um, but it's a community effort. Um, so we invite everybody and anybody to, uh, to you know, help us out with OpenCSP, build, make, it, make it bigger and give suggestions, add to the source code. Um, feel free to, uh, to join this. Um, and I think that's it for my part of this presentation. I hope I didn't talk too quickly, and I hope everybody understood what I was trying to say. Um, and then I'm going to give my part to Lise Lot.
Hello, can you guys hear me? Hello. I'll start sharing my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Okay. Uh, I have not clicked the confirmation button to start sharing it yet. You should be able to see it now. So uh, thanks, Charlie, for your presentation. Uh, so Charlie, I've told you a lot about what you can do with OpenCSP. I want to tell you a bit more about uh, like the technical details of how the class definitions are set up. Because um, since we don't have templates in the source code of pages, and we do have some data in slots, but it's not obvious how this ends up being visible on the page. So I want to tell you something about uh, the skin components we've configured to set up the layout of the pages and how we are using a combination of slots, Lua and array functions. And I will tell you a bit more details about how the default sidebar works and about how the properties are set. So first, uh, I'll just swap to the wiki where I want to demonstrate something. Are you seeing the wiki now? Okay. So this is a example page of a person. This is the title and on the right, you can see the sidebar. So if we can, ins if we can inspect this page, we can see the different components. So at the top, you have the header. The header is the same for every page in the wiki. And then we have the CSP grid. So here we're using a CSS grid and you can see there's a subheader component. There's a sidebar component. And there's a footer component, which in this case is not being used. So these components can be configured to look differently for each class definition, but they also have default versions. And if you look at the grid, you can see there is some styling here. So we have the grid template areas, columns, and rows. So these values also come from the class definition. So if we look at the person class definition, uh, we can edit this. And you can see we have the areas, columns, and rows here. So for example, if you would want to make the sidebar a little bit wider, we could change this number to two, then we can save this page. And if you go back to the person page and we reload it, then the sidebar has become wider. So that's how you can modify the layout of each class definition. Um, so we are using the chameleon skin and I'm not gonna explain all of the components, but there, basically there is a skin folder which has some files for each component. So if you would want to look into that in more detail, that's where you would need to go. And for each component, we are basically um, have config, well, this is for the subheader, sidebar, and footer components. We have configured these so that they parse a system message. So for example, for the sidebar, the system message is called CSP sidebar. Then the system message invokes a Lua function, um, which you can see here. And it does the following. It gets the slot data from a page to find out what class it has, if it has a class. So if there's no class in the slot, it doesn't do anything. But if there is a class, it will find the corresponding class definition page and get slot data from that as well. And then um, in the class definition page, there could be, for example, a sidebar template defined there. And if that's the case, then that template will be parsed. 
or else it will fall back to the default version, like for example, the template CSP default sidebar. And I want to give you a demonstration of how we, which it will be like a simplified example of the default sidebar, because it would be a bit too complicated to get to look at the actual sidebar code, but I will show you a simpler example. And this also uses the slots, Lua, and array functions. So it will be somewhat similar to what um, what Marijn has done in this workshop yesterday. So this is a Lua module I want to use. Um, So this will it, it does similar things to what the what the actual sidebar is doing. So first, it will get the there's a function that we use a lot. It's the slots slot data from the slots extension. This allows you to retrieve data from a slot in your Lua function. So I'm just um, so we are using it for this page that I showed you before. So if we look at the slots, you can see there is a CSP base prop slot. This basically contains the data that all of the pages have. So they all have a title and a class. And then there's the CSP class prop slot, which will contain data that's specific for each class. So for the person, it's their first name and last name and so on. If you go back to the Lua function, we should see that we end up getting this data in our Lua function. So we're logging the page data, and I'm going to show it in the debug console. So here you can see that um, at the bottom you can see the actual wiki text, but all of the parameters are also separate values in a table. And it also, um, in this case, there's only one template, but the slot data function also works if there are multiple templates or on a page. Or, for example, one of these values also contained other templates, and it will be basically divided into separate tables in here. So next, uh, in order to display a sidebar on the page, we would also need to know from the class definition what parameters are defined there. So there's another line here which does something similar. It uses the slots slot data function to get the class data from the class definition page. And we can have a look at that as well. So now you can see that this has basically all of the defined parameters, so most, most of the fields are empty, but for example, you can see that there's a parameter which has the name first name, which is a required parameter, and it it's uses a text form field. Um, then if we want to actually display a sidebar on a page, we would need to combine this data because we want to know we want to know all of the parameters. We want to know what form fields should be displayed, but we also need to know what values have been filled in. So for that, we are going to uh, use a for loop to loop through all of the defined parameters. So these are in the class data CSP parameter definition. Then for each parameter, we are getting the name from this from this table, and then we are also getting the value from the other table, from the page data table. And this line basically inserts the value into the class data table. So then we have, we should end up with a single table, which is going to look like, like this one, but it will also have the values from the content page in there. So this is what it looks like. Uh, well, you can see that it looks the same as what you were seeing before, but now it has, for example, this is the first name, which also has the value Lily from the content page and the, the last name here with the value Smith. So all the data is in there now. And now we can, uh, we can make an array functions export of this data so that then we can access all of these 
values uh, in a template, for example. So that's already in here. It returns the array functions export. So I'm going to show that on a different page. This page where uh, there's some other code here, which I'll explain after. But so here we are invoking the Lua function. And we are just printing it with the AF print function to see what data is in there. And you can see that this looks pretty much the same as what we were seeing in the debug console just now. So it has first name Lily, last name Smith, and all the other values. So now, in order to display this in a sidebar, we would use uh, the AF for each function. I'm just going to comment out this part now. So with AF for each, we can loop through all of the parameters that you see in here. And we are then using the AF get to show the name for each parameter as well as the value. And this is what it looks like. So this already looks quite similar to what we were seeing in the sidebar. I'll just quickly go back to that. So it has the same, yeah, the same parameters with the same values. The layout is a little bit different because we're not using all of the same template code. Um, but we also have the formed version here. When we edit, we have the form fields for each parameter. I want to show that as well. So it's basically almost the same. We can loop through all of the parameters, but now we want to show a form field for each. So uh, of code here which i had prepared for that so we're just replacing this part and uh yeah it's this example is just a text input field which has the parameter name and value as well and if we look at what this looks like you can see we have text fields for each parameter now uh, but in the actual sidebar we have different form fields because these were text fields and this was a date field and this was a token field for example so in the default sidebar we are actually using templates for each of these form fields and uh, we are using the array functions af template parser function which you can see here so what this does it will take all of the data that is defined for each parameter in the array and it will pass these as parameters to a template so we're just basically directly passing that on and then we're um, as, as template name we are using the form field template that was defined on the class definition so now it actually looks like the form that's in the default sidebar with all of the different form fields. And well, that's that's how it works basically. So this is all I wanted to show you for this example. Uh, next, I want to tell you a little bit about how we are setting properties. So in the previous OpenCSP version, it used to be the case that for every class definition you create, you have to create a separate properties template. So if you have a person class definition, you would create person properties. And if you have, for example, organizations in your wiki as well, you would create organization properties. Most of the time, you just want to directly use the parameters as property values as well. So we are, we are creating a lot of similar templates and now we have replaced this by a single template, which is the template CSP class properties. And we can have a look at the template, but all it does is it just invokes a Lua function, which you can see here. So and in, inside this Lua function, it, it works similarly to the default sidebar. It will loop through all of the parameters and then set properties for those. So now we actually need a lot less custom templates, but it's making things easier. Um, but you can still also use, you can still specify a custom properties template as well in the class definition. 
and then the Lua function will basically pass all of the parameters onto that template. So if we look at the slot of a person page, you can see here that it has CSP class properties. And in the class definition, you can still specify a different properties template. Then this template will still be in the source code, but through the Lua function, all of these parameters are passed onto a different template as well, where you can just use the set parser function to set the properties. And I think that's everything I wanted to tell you. So if you want to know more about it, you can also look at the documentation, which is linked above and which Charlie has also shown you. And well, that's it. So if, if you have any questions about either my part of the presentation or Charlie's part, you can ask those now. Or online? Or was it so clear? I think it was quite clear. Here, the audience doesn't have a question. There is one online. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Jaron is, I'm seeing it too. Jaron is asking how you can see the history of the slots. It's actually just in the default history, but I can show you. So I'll just go look at this from the first part of the page. Yeah, so you can see uh, it says the CSP class prop slot, and then it shows the difference in the source code, basically like how you are used to. And if there have been edits to different slots, you can actually see all of them here. I could actually do that. I'll just, yeah, yes. Now you can see that both the base prop slot and the class prop slot have been edited. And you can also revert the edit so that if you want to go back to a previous version, that works a, a little bit weird because you can't actually edit the source code then. So now I'm looking at the old version and I'm trying to edit source because I want to go back to that version. But then it's basically not showing the source code here, but you can click on this link to restore to the previous version and then it will show the difference. So unfortunately you can't edit it here, but you can refer to the previous version. Yeah. 